Six years ago, two chance events really changed my thinking about cancer research. And they led me to believe that we might make rapid progress in reducing cancer deaths if more molecular biologists and more bioengineers directed their research to prevention and early detection. The first chance event was during a routine checkup when my primary care doctor at MIT casually remarked, you know, people at MIT don't die of colon cancer anymore. They're all screened by colonoscopy. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in the United States. Was this possible? The second chance event was a lecture by an epidemiologist. In his opening remarks, he stated, as if everyone knows, 70% of cancer deaths worldwide are preventable. He meant these people need not have gotten cancer in the first place. I had no idea what he was actually talking about. Preventing people from getting cancer in the first place is called primary prevention. Preventing people from dying of cancer by detecting it early and removing it completely is called secondary prevention or simply early detection or screening. So I polled other scientists to see if they knew these absolutely amazing facts. Not one did. <laughs> Finally, I located David Hunter, an epidemiologist at the Harvard School of Public Health and one of our afternoon speakers, and I asked him if it were possible that 70% of the world's cancer deaths are preventable. And David replied, well, everyone knows that. So I thought I'd better go on sabbatical to MD Anderson's epidemiology department and find out. And everyone there did know. So it was as if cancer epidemiologists and molecular biologists we're actually working on different diseases. With the help of several epidemiologists at Anderson, I looked at data for the United States, and I looked at the impact of both primary prevention and early detection. I only included methods that I knew molecular biologists already believe in, since the goal was to convince myself, so then I could convince my colleagues. So here's a slide. Uh, I think. OK, there we are. So right away, when you look at this, about 570 or 80,000 people a year die of cancer in the United States. And this slide shows the number that die from each different type of cancer shown by a colored bar. And what you immediately see is that lung cancer deaths dwarf any other type. So 80 to 85 percent of those are attributed to cigarette smoking. I also learned smoking increases the incidence of at least 15 other kinds of cancer. So overall, about 28% of US cancer deaths are caused by cigarette smoking, even today. Next comes colon cancer. Death from colon cancer may be a thing of the past at MIT, but not apparently in the rest of the United States. This afternoon, David Hunter is going to explain, I think, how professional epidemiologists calculate the number of realistically preventable cancer deaths. But using my very simplistic, simple molecular biologist criteria, banned smoking 20 years ago, colonoscopy for all, no, uh, and it used viral vaccines and so forth, you end up calculating about 255,000 preventable deaths a year, which would be 45% of the total uh, that are caused by things we know what they are, we know why they cause cancer, and they could be eliminated. The other thing I learned was the people in this room are not likely to die of these preventable cancers. We already practice cancer prevention. It turns out that levels of education and wealth explain much of the failure to more fully implement proven methods of cancer prevention. In a way, this is a Bernie Sanders problem. Well, these, this information, these facts had a tremendous impact on me. And not just because we learned how hard it is to cure cancer and prevention is so powerful, but really more, I kept thinking, if only more of our molecular biology and bioengineering students here at MIT worked on prevention and early detection, they could improve existing methods, perhaps, or develop entirely new approaches. So today, Ed Skolnick is going to talk shortly about the potential for early detection research and I'm just going to close with a few comments about primary prevention. So there are two ways to prevent people from getting cancer. You can identify the cancer-causing agents and behaviors and get rid of them. Or you could make people resistant to getting cancer. 
Today, uh, we have speakers who are involved in some of the really exciting, I think, areas of primary prevention research. And these include vaccines to viruses that cause cancer, the mind-blowing possibility of developing vaccines to prevent cancers that aren't caused by viruses, research that could explain how obesity and aging contribute to cancer, the question of whether one day we'll all take pills like metformin or tamoxifen to prevent cancer, as we do already to prevent heart disease. And then we'll hear from economists and people from, the in, from industry about the challenges of developing drugs for cancer prevention or for treating early stage disease, as opposed to what most of us think about as treating late stage disease. So I really want to applaud Tyler, thank him, for bringing together, which was my sort of dream when I was on sabbatical, epidemiologists, molecular biologists, bioengineers, and economists to think about cancer prevention together because I truly believe that this alliance has the potential to revolutionize the cancer field. So now I'd like uh, to introduce Ed Skolnick, who's gonna comment on early detection research. And as many of you know, Ed is chief scientist at the Stanley Center for Psychiatric Research at the Broad. He was formerly the head of all research at Merck. And before that, he discovered the RAS oncogenes and their function. Interestingly, in collaboration with another of our speakers who's here today, Doug Lowy. So, thank you.